It's Create Day. I'm starting with this little wooden tray and I have this piece of scrapbook paper that I picked up from Hobby Lobby and I'm just creasing around the outline of that inner circle on this tray so that I can cut out and um, have a piece that will fit just in the middle of it. Once I had the, the rough outline, I um, put it back in there and scored around that little uh, lip so that I could get a more accurate cut to fit. And it was close, but not quite good enough. Um, but that's okay, because I figured, well, I'm going to fill that in with something else anyway. So I decided to paint this with uh, French linen chalk paint. I did a couple of coats front and back. Now I want to put this little wooden cutout into the center of that tray, but I want it raised. So I cut out these little itty bitty risers out of this wooden dowel. Um, I have this little handheld miter cutter that's really cool. You can do all kinds of angles with it. And I just cut four of those pieces and then uh, glued them onto the back of the sign with my Gorilla wood glue. So for this little pumpkin that I got from the thrift store, I uh, want to remove the wire leaf and tendril thing that they have on there. Uh, to me, those leaves are just too big for that size of pumpkin. And I'm going to do something else. And so I went ahead and spray painted it black. And I'm using these uh, paper towels. I'm just showing you what kind of paper towel I'm using. It's the trifold ones. Um, and I'm going to decoupage these onto the stem so that I can add a more realistic looking texture to this stem. So I'm going to be decoupaging those on as a base and then um, adding little uh, ridges with um, by rolling up that paper towel. Like this is what I'm doing here. I'm rolling it up and I'm going to decoupage that on there to make the look the little ridges are like almost veiny looking things that are on actual pumpkin stems. So that's how it looks. So now for this rolling pin, I wanted to use this buffalo check pattern <clears throat> and the sunflowers, but I didn't like the way it looked if I just put it on there in one piece and there was writing in the one corner. So I decided to do them separately by cutting out the middle piece of that napkin and then separately cutting out the sunflowers and being able to place them wherever I wanted to. I like the idea of um, wrapping them up around the end of the rolling pin. So I just uh, cut out a couple of pieces from the middle of the napkin, removed the bottom layer, and then decoupaged that on. 
Um, my first shot at this, I didn't get it straight, so I had to remove it and start over. So now I'm just adding that second piece, and I got really lucky here. This lined up perfectly on the back side with that seam. I could not believe it. You cannot even tell like where the seam is on this. It was just dumb luck on my part. And so here's the little sunflowers that I cut out and I just did the uh, paintbrush dipped in water and tear it around the sunflowers. Um, I just really like the way that looks and it um, was easier, <laughs> it was a lot easier than fussy cutting these things. I just, that's always an option, but I just wasn't going to do that. I, I like the way it looks this way. So now that our paint is dry on the tray, I'm just going to decoupage on that piece of scrapbook paper. I don't do a top coat of the decoupage over it at this point yet though. And so now, of course, I have to do some air dry clay. Um, I decided to make the little bead molding to go around uh, the space between the scrapbook paper and the little lip that's on the inside of that tray. And what I thought would be best is to lay this all out and um, right there I'm just trimming it to, I have to match the ends up. They don't automatically match. I have to do some trimming. But I thought if I laid it on there and let it dry then I would see how much shrinkage I have and I could, you know, cut a, another piece in to fill in. But it actually ended up warping in addition to shrinking. Um, so I probably should have gone ahead and glued it down and then dealt with the shrinking after that because this stuff does shrink up quite a bit. You will see this. Um, see, here's how it looks now before it's dry. And afterwards, it's there's a huge gaps. So we'll deal with that when we get there. Um, so anyway, now I'm just going to go ahead and Mod Podge the little sunflowers onto the edges or the top and bottom edges of the rolling pin. And now I'm just going to paint those handles with a uh, black chalk paint. And once those handles were dry, it was time to go ahead and do the final coat of decoupage over the entire rolling pin. Okay, so look at this. Look at how much that shrunk and it and it warped. My only choice really was to break this in half and um, work with those, putting them into place, and then filling in it up at the top. Um, it was the only way I could get it to look like it halfway fit right. So here I'm just making a few more of the little beads out of the clay so that I can fill in the gaps.
So then I just went ahead and painted the ones that were dry with the uh, chalk paint that's French linen. Oops, fumble. <laughs> so now my little sign is all dry and I'm just giving it a coat of the white chalk paint. Once that little section that I filled in was dry, I was able to go ahead and paint it. And now I'm just gluing all those pieces down with my tacky glue. It took a lot of fiddling with it um, to try and get things to line up right. And in the end, I just had some spots I wasn't really happy with. Um, so I fixed that with more air dry clay. <laughs> For my little pumpkin, I'm going to be covering it with this dry lock. It's a masonry sealer, and it has a gritty uh, cement-like texture. So I absolutely love this product. I use it on my tombstones uh, that I make over and use in my yard. It seals it. It's weatherproof, and it just gives a realistic cement look. So I go ahead and uh, brush it on and then do a stippling with it as well so that it kind of helps bring out that texture. Now that that's dry, I'm going to give it a base coat of Maui Sand Chalk Paint. And just like I did with the dry lock, I brush it on, but then I stipple over it so I don't have any brush marks. So now my little plate here, I have four shades of gray. And I'm just going to start with the darkest color and move to the lightest color stippling it onto the pumpkin with my chip brush. So here I'm onto the second color and I'm just going to repeat this process with each color. Now this is the lightest one and it will uh, highlight all the raised areas. So you have this um, just nice blended collection of colors and it looks like cement. Now I'm just making some air dry clay leaves. I'm using three of the four different patterns off of um, this mold. I'm going to be applying those to the tray. Some of them I will be bending around the uh, kind of gaps in that bead trim to cover it up and um, then just randomly placing them all around the perimeter of this tray. I only uh, make as many as I can glue on before they they start to dry out because I want to be able to mold them to um, the shape that I want. So, uh, you know, I do 
half a dozen at a time, and I'm just applying them with tacky glue. So you can see how the ones that I've placed up over the beads, it covers those little areas that were eh, less than perfect. And some of these, like this one I'm doing, I'm wrapping around the edge of the tray. So I just thought that would give a little more character. And that's how it looks so far. Okay, so this was a total disaster. I thought I wanted this green raffia tied in a bow <laughs> on the end of this rolling pin. Oh my gosh, this stuff was so curly because it had been wrapped around this thing for, I don't know, five years for all I know. Look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So then I thought, oh, I'll fix that by spraying it down with water and, um, you know, making it lay flat. And it laid flat, but I still hated it. It just, it just didn't look good. So I went with regular raffia, which I still, I'm just not good with this stuff. Like I struggle to, <laughs> I struggle to just make a simple bow. So like with this one, I just did, you know, a knot. I didn't even attempt a bow. And I thought I would add in these little uh, floral picks. And I don't know what it is about raffia. I just really struggle with it. So <clears throat> I get these added in and then I add this green flower. And all I saw was a green witch face with her long hair. Look at that. It's witch face with long hair. So I'm trimming it. Not a very good shot. But look at that. It just, no. So, <laughs> I try adding in some more stuff, and it's still just, no, it just doesn't look right. And then I trim more of the raffias, and now it's like a witch face with short hair. So, <laughs> I end up just ripping that flower off and <laughs> doing something else. I add these little white bud um, they're like budding flowers picks and, and then a white sunflower looking type flower in where the green flower was. And it's not, eh, not exactly what I had envisioned, but, uh, you know, work with what you got. It, it's better than the green witch face. <laughs> oh my gosh. So now I'm gonna mix a brown and a gray. Uh, to go over these leaves, I want this darker color to seep down into the little veins of the leaves. So I brush that on and then I wipe off the surface paint with a rag so that I will have that darker color down in there in those little vein areas. Once that was done, I wanted to dry brush some uh, linen onto the top of the leaves. 
but it ended up being a little lighter than I really wanted. So I go back in afterwards with more of the um, French linen, which was the original color of the tray, just to kind of tone down the lighter color. So now I go in with my white wax and quickly realize that no, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted clear wax. So I wipe off as much as I can and then get the right wax out and uh, cover all of this, the leaves and the outer edge with the wax, with the clear wax, not the white wax. You just brush it on and then wipe it off with a um, clean rag. So now since our centerpiece is too bright and shiny for the way the rest of this turned out, I've got a 320 grit uh, sandpaper and I'm just lightly going over this to distress it a little bit. Um, it just didn't look right. It was too like new looking for the way this turned out. Um, yeah, my original vision was definitely different than how it turned out, but uh, that's part of the process. So then I just went ahead, after I sanded that, I put another, um, I just put a coat of the clear wax over that and wiped it off um, just to give a little bit of a sealer. So now I'm just, uh, with some brown paint, I wanted to add a little distress to the, my little white sign so it would fit in with the rest of this project. Um, then I covered it with the wax, but it was a little, like there was just a little bit too much brown on there, so I ended up going back over with some white paint, uh, the white chalk paint, and um, just kind of phasing that out a little bit so it's not quite as distressed. Now it's time to glue it on just using my Gorilla Wood Glue. Placing it where I want and pressing down. That's just where I want it. So now I've got uh, another one of those little white flowers. And I'm just snipping off the back stem piece so that I can hot glue that into place next to the little sign. And so now I just took some lace ribbon and I'm just going to tie it through that hole and make a bow. I just trim it up and then do a little, uh, little shallow dovetail, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed today's video and got some inspiration. Thank you so much for your support. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. 
and I hope I've inspired you to go create something. See you next time.